It is a flashlight review. Yes, and I really love this light. Now, before I get going here, maybe we have some new folks to TMP. Welcome. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. Subscribe. Join my TMP Patreon or whatever donation service I may use in the future. It keeps the project rolling. Here's the deal. I'm going to say so much positive stuff about the Olight Seeker 2, this flashlight right here. This is in limited edition orange. I know. Very cool. We'll talk about that. Lots of positive things. But I was not paid by Olight to do this. Now, Olight is a great company. I said this in another Olight flashlight review. I love Olight. They're very aggressive in the social media scene. I think they're very smart how they do things. But they don't control my voice, okay? I stay very independent from Olight. I have to say that because you may think <laughs> this will be a commercial for the Olight Seeker too. My subscribers know, the, know all this. They have for years. But maybe if you're new, I just want to lay that out, okay? I use donation funds to go buy this stuff. I don't contact Olight and say, hey, this is how many subs I got, and I can give you some good positive press. Send me a whole case of flashlights and maybe some money. I'm not saying others do that. I'm just saying I don't do that. Okay, okay, we got that out of the way, okay? I absolutely love this light. It is highly recommended. If you think you need such a light, I'll talk briefly about philosophy of use. Buy it using my links below. That will su support this independent reviewing process of which I speak. The light is amazing. POU, what would you use a big light like this for? Nothing fancy. Now, I do lighting product reviews. That's what I've always called them here in the project. Have done them for years. Not a ton, though, because the lights that I've reviewed, I think, stand the test of time. There's really uh, no, uh, let me see, motivation within myself to go out and find a bunch more flashlights because I have so much other content. It's very diversified, which I, I have to give time to, like knives, guns, P51s, apparently, <laughs> watches. This is an AV8 4055 with a nut and fancy hands mod in ghost gray. Look at that. That's sick. So anyways, I do that stuff. That's, that's why. But I do keep my ear to the ground. And when I see something that I think is remarkable in the lighting product scene, so to speak, then I'm going to buy one and I'm going to test it and I'll bring it to tabletop. That's what this review is about. In past flashlight reviews, lighting product reviews, though, I have spoke a lot about philosophy of use, perhaps more than I should have. <laughs> 45 minute flashlight review. I'll try not to do that here, dudes. No promises. I'll try. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about, but I'm going to try to go pretty quick. And what I usually say and have said to my viewers is that you're, you're better served with a light of this size. So this is an uh, older discontinued Olight S20. I believe the S2s replaced it now. So this is a baton. I have a bunch of these. I use them for target illumination in the desert. And they're my EDC light. They clip to the hat, create an instant headlamp. This is a great EDC light. Back to philosophy of use. Why would you go with an Olight Seeker 2, or maybe its successor to the Seeker 3, 4, whatever they end up doing with it, versus this light? Firepower. You, you knew I was going there, right? <laughs> Tim Pierce, you knew I was going to say that. Because this light is so amazing in how it can illuminate an area. And that's how I think of the Seeker 2. It's an area light. It's not really a thrower light. And you can see that with a TIR lens, which I talked about in the other review. Um, it's really designed to flood an area with light. And I'm going to show you my infield testing. It was during winter. I think there was some snow on the ground. I forget. You'll see what it can do. Firepower. When you don't want to mess around and you really want to flood an area with light, maybe you're searching for something, search and rescue, maybe you're an EMT, maybe you're a police officer, something like that, this would be a good light to take. Is it bigger? Yes, it's bigger. Is it heavier? Absolutely. Seven ounces, a lot lighter, or Olight S20, or something like it. Now, for me, everyday use, uh, I'm not going to clip... Uh, and it's a seeker two to my belt in the carry case. That's not going to happen. There's a carry case. We may revisit it. it. It won't happen. It's too big. I don't need that firepower in day-to-day -day ops. This is what I'm using. 
I, I don't use AAA, I don't use AA anymore. I use an 18650 power cell like this one does. Uh, but this light, as capable as it is, and I have, what, a decade? Not quite a decade. I bet I got like seven years of experience using this, this model of light or ones like it in the Olight lineup. Fantastic. This will blow that one away. In, in most respects. Not everything, in most respects. In SAWC, it doesn't. So when you, when you consider philosophy of use, if you're considering getting the Seeker 2, just know it's bigger, it's heavier, but along with that, you get a lot of lighting capability. A lot of lighting capability. And I'll go through the modes here in a little bit, but the reason why that this light is so capable, and it's, it's so fun to say this because I had ranted about this for so long in my other flashlight reviews. I was like, hey, we like CR123, primary cells, 18650. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it may be jargon to you, sorry. An 18650 is like this, this battery right here. It's fantastic. Rechargeable, lasts a long time. It's the reason this small light is so capable. But in those other flashlight reviews, I said, hey, everything boils down to the power cell. We've really kind of, at least with current LED technology, we've kind of learned and how to maximize this size format. Well, Guess what? This does not use an 18650. It does not use uh, CR123s, if you know what those are. It uses this Mamma Jamma. Look at that. 3.6 volt, 5,000 milliamp, 21700. Dude, this thing is a monster. A monster. That's why this light can go all the way up to according to manufacturer specifications. I didn't light box it, nor will I ever. I got better things to do. They're saying 3,200 lumens, everybody. On the Olight Seeker series, at least this version, here's the box. Oh, and by the way, you should subscribe to my Twitter feed because I bought this during a Thanksgiving sale. And I, I told TM Pierce, I was like, hey, I'm gonna review this light. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna review, you know, uh, throw it on tabletop. That's when I bought it, along with several other Olight uh, models. And that's how I got this special edition orange. But 3,200 lumens, they're saying throwing at 250 meters. I'm still thinking of it as an area light. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, well, the Olight Seeker 2 is like, you know, out to 40 yards and that's it. That's not what I'm saying. It will illuminate past that 75 yards. I forget exactly. You'll see the inset video. But to me, it's it's more of an area light, and I'll, I'll stick with that. So here's your modes real quick, and I'll just, I want to fly through these because they're boring. <laughs> the specifications, know that it can go up to 25, uh, I'm sorry, 3200 lumens, and then high is 1200, medium, as you can see here, 300, low 50, and it's got a moon lumen level of five. Awesome moonlight. I love that. You can see the Factory burn times, 12 days, and I'm starting from the bottom going up. 12 days, 52 hours, 930, 110. And then you can see the run time for turbo and the throws are right there as well. Now, if, if, the, now if the battery gets cold, like I always say, <laughs> you're not gonna get these run times. Even with this one, this amazing power cell, which I'm still learning, by the way. I'm new to this one, the 21700. This is the first light I've ever bought that has it. But if it's anything like an 18650, it will be diminished when it's cold. As good as it is. You know, the lithium ion batteries are amazing, but just like anything, when they get cold, uh, you're gonna get diminished performance. A-OK, -okay. that's A-OK. -okay. okay, so that's a, the down and dirty on the light. Amazing throw, great illumination. Let me tell you this too, dudes, okay? This light is so freaking cool. What I just talked about briefly is philosophy of use. Searchlight, when you need a high power light for just illuminating an area. Maybe a home defense light, great light. Although um, I haven't really investigated whether to weapon mount it. I, I think there's better options. This is too fat, I'd have to get you know, special rings. I know, I wouldn't use that. I don't know if it's shock isolated either. So we talked about all that. That's all first cool stuff. The second cool of the O-Light flashlights in a lot of different models, not just a Seeker, there's something about them. First off, look at its appearance. It looks like a lightsaber. I mean, it's just cool. It's really, really cool. Now, when I started doing flashlight reviews like 10 years ago, 
I, I mentioned the term flashaholic, which I think is widely understood now. People who are really into flashlights to have collections of flashlights, they buy and sell and trade flashlights, and I think that's cool. I have no problems with that. I'm not one of those guys. I'm a user. Okay, I, I use them practically as tools in the project, just like these lights, illuminating targets, backpacking adventures, all the stuff. That being said, it makes me want to collect these things. These, these are so cool. I mean, the orange variation of this is fantastic. And that's, like I said in other flashlight reviews on the Olight brand, that's something they do just so well. They'll, they'll come out with a limited edition like this. And there's limited pieces worldwide. And by the way, they sell very quickly. I'm talking within 24 hours. This orange edition, I believe, just totally flew. It, it's gone. There's people who watch Olight sales. And they'll go in and just clean house. They'll order three of these. Some people order 10, then they wait for, you know, a time period to pass and then they put them on, put it on the secondary market. And what do you know, these go for a higher value because of the cool factor, because of the collectability factor. So I, I do want to make a point of that to, to acknowledge how cool these lights are. And it is something, it's a reason to own the light just in and of itself. Same with knives. Here's an SR1 by Line Steel in orange. Look at how cool that is. This is the non-TMP version. Uh, mine was purple. You guys remember my SR1? Those are trading, by the way, for way, way above what uh, guys were paying for them. This is a standard, beautiful orange version, SR1. And look how close it matches that anodization of the Olight Seeker 2 Pro. So cool. Yeah, so knives hold a second cool for us. That's a CRKT Crossbones, really great high value knife. I'll put a link of this below. I love this knife. Great food knife, by the way. I found the Crossbones are just so excellent in food preparation. Uh, second cool, first cool, second cool, first cool. Same with watches. I just want to represent that. Now we go to back to first cool. All that's great. It looks cool, looks great, technical, but dude, this is such a smartly designed light. Everything about it is smart. Here's your UI. Another rant of mine in previous flashlight reviews is as follows. Don't make your UI, your user interface complicated. We forget how it works because we own a lot of different flashlights and we will not remember something complicated. We'll have to go back and read the directions or Google it. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm that way. Not this light, this light's simple. And Olight is known for its simple user interfaces. This is the same way. Here's how you turn it on. It'll memorize the last mode you had on. Notice there's your battery charge level, right? Now it's blinking in the camera just because of the frame rate, but it's solid in real life. So don't think that it's like that. And notice those lights go away because it doesn't want to discharge your battery. And as you can see, I'm in medium mode right here. I'm not going to show it to the camera. Then you press and hold. It'll go to high mode, lights come back, it shows high mode. Now, when I keep and press, press it again, it should go to moonlight mode. Okay, one dot right here. And again, this is battery level here, and the battery level, that's like 75%, 50 to 75, and whatever. So when it goes down to the last green dot, you know your battery's uh, not doing so great, and then it'll turn red. That last one will turn red when it's like 10% or less. Now, so we're on moonlight mode five lumens, which is a very, very useful mode. And uh, I was wrong on that runtime. I double checked it just now. And in moonlight mode, the Olight Seeker 2 and probably its future versions will run for three years. <laughs> three years <laughs> as if. No, it's going to run for a long time. And that's when you're out in the woods and you have night vision. Like I've said before, you're acclimated tonight. So I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited that Olight put moonlight mode in there. It's very useful when you're in the wilderness. Okay, turbo mode. That's one Air One wants to see. And it's the G Wiz mode, apparently 3200 lumens, give or take. And the way you do that, if I don't screw it up, is I think you just double press and hold. Okay, there's turbo mode right there. Notice that all the green LEDs are illuminated. Right? Super bright. It's going to generate heat. You've got ventilating fins around the head of the flashlight, around the body to dissipate that heat. Uh, I think it will run for a certain period of time. I'd have to look in the instructions and it will probably go down to high mode after a while. And uh, this will discharge your battery, of course, uh, relatively quickly. This mode will not be memorized with a seeker too. So when I turn it off, 
and then I turn it back on, it won't come back to turbo mode. I think it just goes to high. There you go. You got three green LEDs, not four. But it's really awesome. I think you triple click it to get into turbo. I'm not turbo, but strobe mode. There it is right here, which is useful. I've talked about this before. Strobe mode is useful. I don't use it a lot every once in a while. Not for signaling. I usually usually use it for locating a target out in the desert when it's pitch black and it's really easy to get disoriented. And also backpacking with smaller flashlights to locate the tent when I walk like a mile or even further away at night to go filter water. Having this on to locate wherever you want to go is really helpful. Albeit, you've left your flashlight at the tent. <laughs> so you might want to have a second one with you. Uh, strobe is cool. A uh, little bit overrated for so-called disorienting your uh, opponent, however. Yeah, there you go. Those are the basic modes. And there's some other features here in the Seeker 2 that are super cool. I'm not going to go into just for time. It has a timer function in it, which is cool, I guess. I don't know if I would ever use that. It has a nine-minute long and a th short three-minute timer mode. It'll tell you how to do that. It has a lock and unlock function. I'm not going to go into that. And uh, that's pretty much the UI. How cool is that? I mean, it's streamlined, it's easy. The button's gonna talk to you. The button is rubber covered. So, well, I got the fingers cut out of this glove. It's tactile. So you could be in a, a gear bag, in your pocket, in maybe your messenger bag, and you feel around, and all you have to do is feel that rubber button, and you found the secret to turn on switch, and you're good to go. Smart, smart. Uh, here's the head. So it's not a deep throw head. Again, you can look up that TIR head and LEDs. I don't think a lot of dudes care about that so much. Good area lighting is what I'm just gonna say. And my flashlight reviews dudes used to be so technical. I ain't doing that no more. I've said that for years. Uh, slightly crenellated bezel. So it's not really a strike bezel. I think this is user input to be totally honest with you guys. I think most users didn't like the crenellated bezel, like a real sharply serrated bezel that you could use as a strike weapon. Uh, you could still use that bouncing back to philosophy of use, you, kind of a coupaton, although you just don't have those teeth. The upside to not having those is it won't shred fabric, maybe injure your uh, exposed flesh, like hands or something, so there's an upside to it. Uh, really good construction throughout. I mean, it's IPX8 rated. We know what that means. The quality on this is fantastic. These are silicone pads on the body. Another way to orient it too. So you can like grab it and you can say, oh, that's on, you know, I'm holding it on the side. And then when you go like that and just feel metal button. And more importantly, it provides a little bit of traction. No knurling on this one. So that's a different approach. And there's a competitive option I'll show you that is knurled, kind of old school. This is just a different approach. I, I like it. And I don't think the silicone is so grabby like uh, rubber is. Let's look at the threads, how they're cut. Nice O-rings. I have lubricated them. I mean, the quality level on this thing is just awesome. It's just amazing. No surprise, we'll look in the body and we're gonna have little brother S20 provide some lighting here. Now, when I mention shock isolation, if you don't know what I mean, that would be a way for the weapon light to absorb recoil. And usually that's one, usually two springs in a light. So everything's just kind of absorbing that recoil. I don't see that in a seeker too. Now, I haven't tested this with recoil or drop testing. I don't honestly know. Uh, but for me, this really isn't a weapon light. I have a lot better options like I mentioned. Look at the knurling right here, how clean that is. Really fine knurling here. It does come with a little uh, lanyard split ring here that you can attach if you want it. There's your charging base. Now, the 21700 battery, I don't know if it's proprietary to Olight. It might be. I'm not following the market. There may be other lights that use it. I honestly don't know. But you just want to think of it as a proprietary battery. So you're not going to have another light that, that works with this. <laughs> it definitely isn't going to work with your uh, S2 you know, and as such, it has to be charged with the provided charging system, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And I've dropped it, of course. Totally have dropped it. Oh, here it is. So here's your charging cable, dudes. Olight logo on this. Blue anodized aluminum. It's magnetically clipped to the base. Look at that. How cool that is. 
And this is cool too. This is like a nice attention to detail. I like the color on it. It's a silicone keeper for your USB cable to your flashlight. That's one way you can charge it. I usually will put it in like a two, two amp or higher charging socket. It seems to do better. And then included with it, at least the Pro model, you have this L bracket. So I think that's what the Seeker 2 Pro is. It comes with these additional things. And so the way you're gonna run this is you would mount this to a wall. You would put your flashlight on the base like that. And then you would probably leave permanently the magnetic charging fob right here. And, and then when you need to charge your light, let's say you're using it as a home light, just a, a general utility light at the house, you just set it right there. And so your battery's always charging. Really high quality, really simple. Look, they even put freaking double stick on the back of this. Super cool, man. This light is fantastic. Not the smallest light. It isn't. High quality though, bright, super cool. Uh, I took most of the crap out of this box, but anyways, there's a look in the box right here. You can't really tell much. I, I basically will throw this box away. Sorry, I, I don't have room to keep it. <laughs> I just don't have room to keep it. Uh, now, here's the deal on Olight. Now, I do want to represent this because it's interesting. Olight has these colors come out, like I said, and they go very quickly. So, you may see this review and go, oh my gosh, I love that orange version. You ain't going to find it. I don't think, unless we're extremely lucky in my timing, if they come out with an orange version again, it's probably gone. In fact, you may go to the Olight store, which I will link below, and you may not see this in stock. That's a downside to Olight. They will sell through product and it may be a while before they get it in again. I know, it's frustrating. I don't like it either. It's really hard as a reviewer because I have a bunch of content that I'm posting. I can't usually fast track a flashlight review and time it with Olight, whatever they're doing. Special edition, it's in stock now. I, I have too much other stuff going on. So don't be frustrated. Check back to this video if you don't see a color you like or if it's even in stock and you'll see it come back. They will bring it back. It just sells. That's the thing. That's the message I'm sending here is that a lot of people buy Olight. It's maybe the most popular brand I can think of right now. Uh, that's a bold statement, but I, I honestly feel that's true. And again, a lot of it is the product. The products are fantastic. They're perfect in my estimation. I mean, again, I'm a user. I'm not a flashaholic. I'm talking about years and years of experience. I'm not on Olight's payroll. No, I'm not. Uh, but they do have a very aggressive social media presence. They have a lot of reviewers that push their product and that might be part of it too. A lot of YouTubers do it, a lot of bloggers do it and it adds up. So you gotta be patient, dude. You have to be patient. That's a downside. But is it worth it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The Olight Seeker 2 and Soon it will be the Seeker 3, Seeker 4. I do not anticipate coming out and doing update videos on those because I don't think they're going to be that different. Uh, maybe down the road if they change something remarkably, I'll do it. Oh, it's highly, highly recommended. If you're good with that 7-ounce weight, the thickness of it, and by the way, I forgot to show you this in detail, the holster. So notice it doesn't have a clip like the S2, the S, uh, well, the S30, the S20 did. Uh, no, you're going to have this, a holster. Molly compatibility, I like how they're doing that still. So it can hook onto an LBE vest. Uh, pretty decent quality actually, I don't mind it. Ballistic nylon padded inside with fleece. Yeah, it's a decent sheath, I don't mind it at all. Oh, before I wrap it up here on Tabletop, talking about the Seeker series of flashlights by Olight, here is one competitive option, which I really like, not from Olight. It is the Ace Beam L16 shown previously in some other flashlight reviews. I love this light. It's fantastic. Now it's an 18650 light, has the same power cell as this, and that means it won't go up to 3200 lumens, only 2000. <laughs> yeah, only 2000. Uh, I think it's a great light though. I love Ace Beam lights. And while I love Olight, and I do, I don't wanna say it's the only flashlight manufacturer out there. It's just that, I don't know, I just kind of got stuck using them. Kind of that. I'm a user. The uh, Ace Beam is a great product. I reviewed some of their lights. Highly, re highly recommended. 
Uh, if you guys want a review on this, I guess I could break it out separately. I honestly don't remember if I talked about it. Uh, but here we see kind of the older school, the older approach to making a flashlight. This is more modern, cleaner, simpler UI, more communicative to the user with the lights. This one's a little more cryptic. So you've got a side push switch here. It'll cycle through the modes. And I'll just press and hold and you can kind of see it doing its thing. Well, one thing I love about this, it's one lumen in Firefly mode. <laughs> one lumen. Yeah, it'll run for 10 years in that mode. Yeah, I did make that up. I don't know. Oh, 500 hours is what manufacturer claim is. Uh, low is 150 lumens, 12 hours. Mid is 550 lumens, 2.5 hours. Again, manufacturer's claims. High, 1,000 for 1 1.2. And then you go to turbo mode, which should be a double press here. One, two. There's turbo mode. Did I screw it up? Oh, see, there you go. Non-simplistic UI. I did three presses and that took us to, uh, well, strobe mode. Triple click does, double press. There it is, turbo. Okay, and again, this UI is simpler to me and I have to just kind of remind myself, well, how does this ace beam work in? I'm sure you guys are the same way. Anyways, there's turbo mode and it just shut off <laughs> for whatever reason. It's probably because of the battery. So the battery state may be lower and it just can't support the turbo mode. That's almost always what happens. Uh, the light itself is fantastic. I love it. Also has a rear clicky switch and there's a whole thing you can do with the L16. Okay, but it is older school. So it has a clip on it right here. It's got an anti-roll thing going on here. Rubber switch, comes with extra parts, kind of the old way of building the head. I shouldn't say old way, just a different approach. Uh, I like it. And then here's your charging port. I think that's a micro USB for the Ace Beam L16. Same exact weight, seven ounces. Good light. I like it. Even though it's shutting off on us, probably because of the battery. But this has more versatility than that because this can run off primaries, CR123 batteries, if your 18650, apparently like this one, is not working or it's not charged enough to support it. Uh, you want to put in, either in some cardboard spacing in this. Let me see. Maybe I don't have an 18650 in it. Oh, I got an ace beam light, and I haven't charged that one in a while. So these will fit tightly in here, but if you put CR123s, they're going to rattle unless you put a plastic sleeve in them, is what I use, just so you know. Okay, competitive option, real quick. The ace beam L16. I don't really know, again, if they're making this. They might be. Great light. Uh, which one would I prefer between these two? Hmm. If you're saying for like a home light, just using for a, around the house utility light, I would go with the, the O-Light Seeker 2. I would. Um, now, this does have some advantages. It is a little bit smaller in circumference, and it does have that clip, which adds versatility. And again, battery versatility, which this one does not provide. Oh, by the way, your Seeker 2 can tail stand. I forgot to mention that. But uh, fantastic lights. This one is phenomenal. Highly recommended. I got to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the Nut and Fancy Project. Year after year, we keep cranking along. Thanks to the TMP donors. That's right. I am only beholden to my donors, and they are the ones that uh, paid for this review. Thanks so much. More to come.